In the previous lecture, we understand the easiest way to create the GET request. Now, let's take a look at how to create the HTTP POST request. There are many ways to perform an HTTP POST request in Node. I'm going to show you two different ways to create POST request. So, let me first show you a native HTTP POST request. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to first create here constant variable, HTTP, and require the HTTP module. Just out of that, I'm going to create the constant data variable, so I can pass this data with the HTTP POST request. So, here I'm going to create a variable constant data and specify here json.stringify and right here I'm going to pass an object. So, here I'm going to pass name and I'm going to specify value to it, John Doe and then I'm going to specify job and I'm going to specify job content writer. Just for that, down here, I'm going to create a request. So, here I'm going to say constant request is equal to then I'm going to call the HTTP module and then I'm going to call a method request. And inside this method, we have two arguments. First is the URL of the API and second is the callback function. So, I'm going to first specify URL here. So, what I'm going to do is, instead of just specifying URL, I'm going to specify hostname, path, method and the content type. So, I'm going to simply specify here an object like this and then specify my callback function here just like this. So, this is my first argument of the type object and this is my second argument of the type callback function. Now, to the first argument, I'm going to specify first the URL. So, using hostname property, you can specify URL to this request method. So, here I'm going to say hostname, specify colon and in the single code, I'm going to specify request response dot in. So, this is the URL and then I'm going to specify path and here I'm going to specify the path in the single code. I'm going to specify forward slash API forward slash users. Now, as you can notice, this is a type of object. Why don't you specify this object independently instead of specifying this object inside this argument? So, what I'm going to do is up here, I'm going to create a variable, a constant variable options is equal to, and then I'm going to specify here an object. And then I'm going to specify these properties inside this object like this. And then I'm going to copy this path, specify here comma, and then specify here path variable. And then right here as a first argument, I'm going to specify these options. Now, just for that, once I specify the path of this URL, I'm going to specify a method. So here I'm going to say method, specify colon, and in the single code, I'm going to specify post. So this is the type of post method. So here I'm going to specify post. Just for that, I'm going to specify header and in the object, I'm going to specify content type. And just for that, specify here colon and say here in the single code application JSON. Now, just for that, I'm going to save this file. Now, let me explain this code. So here in this options, I'm going to specify the host name request response dot in. This is the website where you can test your API. If you want to know more about this website, you can just head on to your browser and just search for request response dot in. Using this website, you can test your application against a real API. So this is a very helpful website. And as you can notice, I specify here path of this hosted URL, then specify the method post and the content type. Just for that, inside this request, inside this callback function, right here, I'm going to simply create a variable let data is equal to and then specify single quotes. So, here in this data, I'm going to store all the response data. Just for that, I'm going to say here console.log and using this console.log message, I'm going to display the status code. So, in the double code, I'm going to say status code and then here, I'm going to call the status code property of response object. So, as you can notice, we did not specify here response object. So, let me just specify that inside this parenthesis. So, when we get the response from this URL, I'm going to store it in this variable. So, here I'm going to say response. And now, let me just print the response code. So, here I'm going to say response dot status code. So, using this message, you will get the successful or the error status code of the response. Just out of that, down here, just out of this message, I'm going to just say here response dot on. I'm going to call a method on and then specify event data. As you know, when we get the data from the URL, this event 
will automatically fire and execute the callback function. So for the second argument, I'm going to specify a callback function like this. And don't forget to specify parameter here to get the URL data. So here I'm going to specify chunk. And inside this on method, I'm going to concatenate this data with data variable. So here I'm going to say data plus equal to chunk like this. And just out of that down here, I'm going to simply say response dot on and call an event end. So when the request is successfully end, I'm going to just return this callback function. And with this callback function, I'm going to print a message. So here I'm going to say console dot log. And then I'm going to specify here body and then specify here JSON dot parse and I'm going to specify here my data. So I'm going to call my data variable here. Now just out of that, once we've done that, as you know, with post request, you send some data. So as you can see, I have this data variable. I'm going to just send this data with post request. So here I have this request object. I'm going to use this object to send the data. So down here, I'm going to say here request dot right i'm going to use this method and pass my data variable and just out of that i'm going to just end this request using request dot end save the changes and now let me just change the name of this data variable so you will not get confused i'm going to just change it to body like this so you will completely understand the difference between this data variable and this response i'm going to save the changes and now let me execute this file open the terminal and here I'm going to say index.js and press enter. Oops, as you can notice, I'm going to have the error message, unexpected end of a JSON input. Most of the node applications use HTTP modules, but many API block the request because of the SSL issues. So to solve this problem, I'm going to just make this request as HTTP as request. So instead of HTTP, here I'm going to specify HTTP as. HTTPS is the HTTP protocol or TLS or you can say or SSL. In Node.js, HTTPS module implemented separately. This module used to make a request to any server. So I'm going to use here HTTPS and save the changes and try the same thing again. I'm going to open my terminal, clear the screen and here I'm going to say node index.js. When I press enter, as you can notice, I'm going to have the result what I want. So using this secure HTTPS, you will not get any SSL issue. So in the output, you can see a status code 201, which is the successful status code of API. And then we have the body. Inside body, we have the JSON data. Now, as you can notice, to make the post request, it takes almost 35 lines of code. Using Axios library, you can make the post request within few seconds. So let me show you how to make the HTTP post request using a simple Axios library. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my terminal and here I'm going to install the Axios library. So to install library, I'm going to say npm install hyphen s to save this library as dependencies and I'm going to specify the library name. So here I'm going to say Axios. When I press enter, we have this library in this node modules folder. And if you open the package.json, you have this library here as well as a dependencies. Now I'm going to use this library and make the HTTP POST request. So I'm going to back to my index.js and instead of this request, I'm going to use Axios library. So I'm going to get rid of this statement right from here and I'm going to import this library in this index.js. So instead of this HTTP module, I'm going to say here constant Axios is equal to call the require function and inside it, I'm going to call the Axios library. And down here, I'm going to simply say Axios.post. So I'm going to call a simple method of this library. So as a first argument to this post method, I'm going to specify the address. So as you can notice, this is the URL of the request. So I'm going to specify this URL as a first argument. So in the single code, I'm going to say HTTPS colon forward slash, then specify request of response dot in forward slash api users so i'm going to specify this host name and the path in this url just out of that as a second argument i'm going to get the data from this url i'm going to say here data and just after that once we have the data i'm going to use then method we use then method in promises 
then method allows us to create a synchronous code. So using this library, we can make a synchronous request. So down here, I'm going to specify dot, then call a method, then, and inside this method, I'm going to call a response and specify a callback function here, like this. And inside this function, I'm going to say console.log, and in the backtick operator, I'm going to say status code. And then I'm going to just concatenate the status code here. So I'm going to specify dollar curly braces response dot status. Just after that, I'm going to specify console dot log. And using the backtick operator, I'm going to specify body. And here I'm going to specify response dot data. And at the end, I can call the error as well. So I'm going to say here catch. And here I'm going to call error. And in the callback function, I'm going to specify console.log and print this error. And I'm going to just get rid of this constant variable. Just like this. Save the changes and execute this file. So I'm going to open my terminal, clear the screen. And here I'm going to say node index.js. When I press enter, as you can notice, I'm going to have the result what I want. So when you execute your file, you can notice you have the result something like this. We have the status code 201 and have the body. Inside body, we have object. Now, if you want to print this object, you can use a JSON stringify method. For example, let's say I want to print this object on my console. So I'm going to grab this response and here I'm going to say json.stringify and just pass this data. Save the changes and now execute this file again. As you can notice, when I execute this file, I'm going to have the result what I want. I'm going to get this data from this request. So as you can notice, it's super easy to create a post request using Axios library. It takes only 16 lines of code to create this post request. So I hope you understand how to work with HTTP request in Node. Next, we'll start working on files.